David Noton is a renowned travel and landscape photographer who has been taking pictures professionally for more than 30 years. Bitten by the travel bug when he was in the Merchant Navy, he has photographed in around 100 different countries and has returned to many of them on numerous occasions. He has a particular love for Canada, having spent part of his childhood there. His philosophy is to inspire and inform, and he shares his love of photography with subscribers to his F11 photography magazine. And nowadays, a great deal of his work is created specifically for this. I visited him near his home in Dorset to talk about three of his images. Hi David, it's good Hi to see Elsa. you. Hi Looking forward to talking about some of your pictures today. So am I. So we're going to start off with this one from Namibia, which yep. I think is important to you for, for several reasons, if you'd like to tell us a bit about it. Well, this is an image from quite a few years back, in fact, uh, almost 20 years ago, right. really. Since this was shot in the late 90s, the, the whole world has changed, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. In the world of photography and otherwise. Um, and yet I feel very strongly that the, the elements that make pictures work, what makes this picture work, for example, is exactly the same, yeah. despite the fact that the technology I used is completely different. We'd spent about a week here in the Namib Desert and uh, camping on the fringes of the National Park and investigating it. Yeah. I found this location after a few days and then went back to be there, you know, first thing in the morning. So we got there and uh, in the darkness and hiked up these sand dunes, which is seriously hard work. Yes. Uh, and I wanted to, to capture this scene with untouched by human intervention and was working away and, and thought I'd got the picture nicely nailed as this wonderful side lighting painted the scene. And Wendy was beside me and she kept saying, you know, I want to run into the picture. Yeah. And I said, just hold on, let me get it first. And then I said, OK, off you go. And as she started to walk into the frame, I thought, do you know, I think this is far, far better with her in it right. than without. And so I got her to, to stop at that key point. Yes. And I think it works in, with that figure in there because it gives the whole picture a sense of scale. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's a picture also that means a lot to us mm. because with Wendy in there, it's sort of a symbol of, you know, our our decades of travel will travel together, you know. Because she's, she's an important part of your your photography absolutely. world, isn't she? And yeah. she accompanies you on a lot of your trips. And That's right. Yeah, we're a team and, uh, we, you know, we've had some fantastic adventures together. Yeah. And this picture kind of symbolises that, really. Yeah, yeah. And then in this sort of light, obviously, it's quite harsh so to control it presumably you would have needed some kind of grad in the sky would yeah, you? Yeah it's really simple picture all the best pictures are the simplest pictures really so um, we've got uh, I've got a grad here I think it I'm going from memory here you know because this was back in the film era I'm pretty sure it was a 0.9 soft grad on here just to, to hold back the sky there really yeah, um, yeah. but I think what appeals to me also about this picture is the simplicity, not just of the composition, but colour-wise. There's just two colours in this picture, the, the warmth in the sand and the blue in the sky. And so this is obviously shot on the panoramic format, which is something you're known for. I think it replicates in many ways the way we look at landscapes. And you've got a wide view horizontally, but a relatively standard perspective vertically so you've got this lovely width but this nice balance between foreground and, and background nowadays it's a difficult format as well because it just doesn't fit the way we look at pictures so mm. often you know they need to be printed big they do definitely have we got here so this one lives on our kitchen wall This next shot, I believe, was taken in Burma. And yeah. I think it's quite interesting because it shows the value of shooting right up to the last minute, doesn't it? That's right. It was the last day of a, a, a trip which uh, had lasted a month. Uh, and we were flying out that afternoon. Uh, so I decided to go back to this temple in uh, Yangon. But I was drawn by this lovely patterning in the tiling there. And of course, the golden spires 
beyond. And I thought, well, let's set up a, a composition here, really quite meticulously composed. I used a tilt and shift lens, yeah. 17 mil tilt and shift lens to make sure that all my verticals were absolutely perpendicular. It's quite an architectural picture. And then I saw this nun approaching and she walked right past me. I hit the, the cable release as she hit her mark. Yes. And I thought, yes, that, you know, I was really pleased because again, we've got this lovely color contrast between the warmth of her robes and the really cool blue light yeah. there on the, on the tiling. And she even had the umbrella, just everything seemed right. Exactly, you know? yes. I think this picture really stands as a testament to how, how luck is important in all our photographies. Absolutely. I got lucky that morning because she came along. Yeah. And as she walked past and as I pressed the shutter, after I scrolled through the pictures thinking, yeah, I, I think that worked, I got really lucky. And then I didn't realize quite how decisive a moment that was yeah. until I saw that bird up there in the frame. Yeah. And so, sure, that was double luck exactly. that morning. But you know, you get lucky if you're in the right place at the right time. Exactly. And I yeah. was there when the light was right. I was ready and waiting and, yeah. and it worked for me that morning. In truth, really, you know, for every session like this, only, you know, maybe one in four really comes off as the way I want it. And when I go all the way to Burma, you know, I don't want to be coming back with hundreds or thousands of pictures. It's all about quality over quantity, you know, from a trip like this, I'm going to look at a collection of maybe 10 images, which I think are really strong enough to, to have warranted the trip. So similarly to the previous picture, you're shooting in quite harsh light that changes rapidly. So presumably you would have used a filter to control that. Yeah, indeed. We've got uh, quite a contrast problem here. The, br you know, the sunlight on the temples there and my foreground in shadow. So it's a classic case of using a, a grad to tame that contrast. I'm using a 0.9 ND grad soft mm. because I had to be very careful that you don't see any visible transition here on the white spires there. And I'm pegging my exposure for the brightest highlight. Essentially, I'm trying to give the raw, that precious raw image, I'm trying to capture as much tonal and color information as I can. Yeah. And then if the de once the detail's then there, I can then fine tune the brightness of my foreground and the contrast. Uh, but it's very important to me that it, it is one capture of one decisive moment. This shot is taken in Canada in Yoho National Park in, in British Columbia, an absolutely beautiful part of the world. Uh, but even Yoho National Park is this huge area and when you're looking at doing a trip to Canada, it's almost intimidating. Yeah, because it's so vast, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. second largest country in the world. Where do you start? It's an absolute paradise for landscape photographers, but at the same time, it's really difficult to know yeah. where to go. And many people make the mistake of trying to bite off more they, than they can chew, trying to see it all. So with this trip, we stayed here on this beautiful glacial lake called Emerald Lake and stayed there for a week mm. and just spent that whole week investigating the area around the lake and in the surrounding mountains, hiking the area and going back and, and shooting it and really working that immediate environment. And I just go back three, four, five mornings in a row to yeah. the same place, work in the same location until I felt that I'd done it justice. And I can see why this composition appealed to you because this V shape created by the tree trunks is, is quite interesting the way it leads you into the mountains. Yep, yep. Again, we've got strong foreground interest, but I'm really, really careful with my compositions that you can almost get seduced by the, the, the impact of the foreground. But, you know, these mountains, the presidential range, they're big. And I want to show them as being big mountains. Yeah. So if I go too wide, 
those mountains will look about as impressive as the Mendips. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so nothing against the Mendips, but you know, we're here in the Rocky Mountains. So yeah. essentially I'm always looking at that relationship between foreground and background. So by by picking a focal length, an angle of view that was moderate enough to include my foreground interest, retaining the impact of those big mountains in the distance was was crucial. Yeah. And in terms of filters, what would you have used on a scene like this? Well, with reflections, you can get this perfect balance between top and bottom by using a 0.6 ND. And so I've used a 0.6 ND grad hard laid along the edge of the water there. And in fact, because the glacial waters of this lake are so blue mm. because of the sediment, the glacial sediment in suspension there, that it looks quite light there. But we've got this lovely balance between, between top and bottom there. With, with using grads, you've got to be really careful. If you use too much of a grad and you get the top the, looking darker than the, the, the reflections, then that's clearly going to look unrealistic and, yeah. and jar the eye. Yeah, you're eye. going to lose the balance, all the balance that's of the image right. that you've worked so hard to, that's to right. create. It's been great to talk to you, David, and learn a bit more about these three pictures. So thank you very much. Oh, no, it's been my pleasure, Elsa. Thank you.